Hey everybody, Philip here again, and today we are reviewing a product. It is the Safe Air for the Phantom, and it's produced by a company named Para Zero. Now, before we get too far into this, this is a product that I have received at no cost to myself. Um, and actually, Kelly and I are working on a review together about it. While I did not go out and buy this with my own money, I still promise, as always, that I'm going to give you an unbiased review according to my understanding and feelings of the product. That said, today we are strictly going to be installing it as well as taking a look at it from a, a technical perspective. And towards the end, we're probably going to talk about a little bit about regulation as well and what this does and does not mean for you as a drone flyer having this installed on your system. Now before we get too far, I do want to talk about the people who make this and that's Para Zero. So Para Zero was started in 2014 in Israel and it's founded by a group of passionate aviation professionals. And this group of people really wanted to help solve the main problem with drones and that's safety. So that's how they got started and since then they've become one of the largest suppliers of parachutes for drones of all shapes and sizes. The most recent product they've put forward though is the Safe Air for the Phantom. So this product right here is specifically for the Phantom 4 series and we're going to be installing it on my Phantom 4 today. Now to give you some context, I just bought this Phantom 4 from Kelly from Ready Set Drone and now he's asking me to put it on the line for this product review. So this should be very interesting and very exciting. I'm definitely going to link to the video where we're doing the testing of the product as well. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's talk about the product first. So this is a system that's meant to do two things. One, it's going to stop your propellers from rotating, which is a cause of in injury for people underneath of you as well as property beneath you. And the second thing it's going to do is it's going to deploy a parachute. That parachute is going to slow down your drone during its descent. So hopefully whenever it hits the ground, it doesn't actually hit it as hard as if it had no parachute at all. Now this could still cause some damage to your drone depending on the velocity that your drone hits the ground at and what type of ground you're hitting, but it's going to be better than having no solution at all. And hopefully during our testing the Phantom 4 does not get hurt because that would be sad. Very sad. So this product is supposed to be able to be installed in less than 10 minutes, um, at least that's what the website says. It also is supposed to be fully autonomous, so it's supposed to detect if my drone gets into a situation where the parachute needs to be deployed. And as far as the specifics of the system, that's all we're going to be talking about for now, but we will talk about this more after we get it installed. Alright, so we have the Phantom 4 Pro here now, and I have both types of propellers. So I have the quiet propellers as well as the normal propellers. And I'm curious to see if the type of propeller, given the, the difference in the size, makes any difference when we're installing them. Because as you can see here, these plastic guards are what stop the propellers. So I'm curious if the size and shape of the propellers make any difference for the installation. That said, I have the video up here. I'm starting it now and I'm going to watch it so that I know how to install it. Hi again, David from Para Zero here. Uh, it's time for us to install our Safe Air Phantom onto our Phantom drone. How exciting. First thing to do is to open your placement tool. Open placement. This placement tool is used to make sure that we put the placement stamp in the correct place on top of our drone. There's only one correct way to put it on top, so make sure that you pay attention to the symbols. Battery side goes on top of the battery. Okay. I'm going to remove the propellers one at a time. Okay, now it's time for me to take the placement stamp and put it directly on top of the drone. Again, battery side on top of the battery. The black dots you see correspond with the black dots on the propellers. So again, make sure you put everything in the correct place. As we said, there's only one correct way to do it. It's a tight fit, but it fits. Now that I have, it, I have the pieces on top of the four propellers, I'm gonna grab my placement stamp. I have two. Right now I'm only gonna use one. I'm gonna put the other one to the side. Well, that's cool that they give you two, so that way if you have multiple drones or if this one crashes and dies, then you have an extra. So now we install this and we put it right where that hole is. Press firmly. Keep this. You may need it later. Put it to the side. Fold it. Hope that's good enough. I, I think. think so. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. 
And he made sure not that we should keep this, and that, I guess that'd be good if we ever need to install it on another drone. Or, if we had to reinstall it on this one. Now, he also mentioned that we should make sure that the unit's powered off. We are powered off, so that's good. And we also need to start unwrapping this wire here. So this will actually go around the drone. Okay. Now this also apparently needs to be removed before flight, but I'm just gonna leave that there for now. Now pay attention to the arrow right here. This arrow points to the front of the drone like so. I'm gonna lay it down, making sure that my hook is out like this so that it does not affect my placement. I'm gonna lift up the drone and put the string around the legs. So he has it off to the side here. Error placing forward. Yes, okay. And these need to go around the legs. Again, there's only one correct way to put it. Simply sit it on top. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna says we need to sure sit it on top. Is around the side underneath the battery. Oh, you know what? I think he said to undo this one too. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot to undo this one. Well, that makes more sense. All right. And then what about this? That this guy should be sticking out. What are we doing, dude? Go back. Until you feel that the string is taut. Okay, so Make that sure goes the there. Opposite sides. And once you feel it's tight enough, lift up the drone by the system, making sure it feels like one complete unit. All right, so this doesn't actually twist on like I thought that it might. What it does instead is it just sits on it sits on top of that piece that we installed and then um, on this side over here there's a little hook th that we put that wire up into and then on the back here near the battery there's a little twisty thing that we twist until it's tight and then he says to test it you got to lift up on the drone from the pair of zero, and it should be nice and tight. Okay, that looks good, I think. The only question is, is the battery going to fit in? Let's go grab a battery real quick. So now, if we try to install the battery... fits just fine. Alright, so not a real concern. Battery fits on just fine. And then now, let's check the propellers here. Um, so that's the wrong side. We're going to start with the probably the more uncommon propellers. So I'm not sure if it's something that I did or if it's something that's just a natural part of the product, but the actual placement of this has a little bit of play. So if you take a look on this side, it can move back and forth a little bit and you can actually see the propeller slightly hitting it. So you can move it slightly and then that, that issue is gone. But so far I don't know if I'd recommend using the uh, quiet propellers with this. Let's put on the regular ones and see if the margins are a little bit better. So this one has the same issue. If you have it pushed just out, just off the center, like it, it could move around just a little bit, has a little bit of play. 
the propeller will start to hit this. Um, so I don't think that's an issue with the quiet propellers alone. Let's see if making this any tighter helps. Okay, I don't think I can make it any tighter. Oh, maybe one more. All right. All right, that seems pretty tight. It has a little bit less play, which is good. I can still turn it so that it hits it though. You can hear that, right? I can turn it back and it doesn't. But if it gets turned slightly to the left here, then it'll hit it. Got this about as tight as I can get it. Let's try one more. Okay, I was able to get one more. Let's yeah. Ah! Well, ladies and gentlemen, I just deployed the parachute. Um, well, I guess now's a good time to talk about how the propellers actually stop. Whenever the parachute's deployed, what happens is, I'll try to keep this folded. The entire unit turns and then these propellers start to hit these rubber points and that's what stops them from moving. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have, now I'm going to have to watch a video about how to repack this. So uh, I guess bear with me. Okay. I mean, I don't know how well uh, how I feel about the way this is held in. If you look closely, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of gap there. Let me rewatch the video in case he mentioned something about a gap. Pull the parachute over. Okay, you're supposed to check to make sure it looks tight on all corners and then it looks good. I mean, all the corners look about like that. They all look like they have about that same rim. So I guess that's good. This, I wonder if that play on the bottom was from this rotation here. That would kind of make sense, but if that's the case, I'm hoping that I guess it just doesn't move around like I was able to do with it. I think that's what caused the deployment. So I guess putting it down initially as is, not trying to twist it at all, does seem to get it into a place where it's good. It's only once I started to manually twist it to to reveal that play that the issues actually started and that the parachute deployed. Still feel a little bit iffy about that cover, but I guess we'll have to deal with it. So we did installation, we also did repacking. I didn't plan on doing repacking in this video. And now I think this left is uh, to charge it and then take it up in the air. So I'm going to go ahead and get charging it and uh, then I'll head out to fly it. Alright, so we are back and unfortunately bad things have happened. So here's the Phantom 4. Here's the landing gear on one side. Here's the landing gear on the other side. Um, 
For what it's worth, the gimbal seems to be okay. But I also did hear weird noise, a uh, weird clicking noise on the inside whenever I was turning it on out when we were testing it. Uh, I'm not sure if that's because there's some type of uh, internal component that's loose and it's hitting a fan, or if maybe that's just something that's always done and I've just been unaware of it. But we are gonna have to send this in for repairs. Uh, I am going to try to retain the thing for the Para Zero so that we can install it on the replacement drone if they give me a new one or at least so that they don't just keep it and I don't get it back ever. I did mention that we might be talking about regulation in this video but it's becoming too long already. I'm already into the editing process and I know that you guys don't appreciate super long videos so we're going to push it off to another video. I will go ahead and give you my thoughts on this unit though for now. I'm uh, probably going to do some follow-up videos on it but my thoughts right now are I do have some concerns about the longevity of this. Uh, particularly the plastic lid. So if I even apply some pressure at the corner here, it pops up. I'm not necessarily a fan of that. I understand it has to be lightweight in order for it to not affect the flying of the drone, but I'm really concerned that this plastic lid is just gonna pop up while I'm flying at some point, and then the parachute's gonna deploy when it doesn't need to deploy. And then what happens then? It's going to be really hard to land it because it has a parachute. It might even affect the flying of it. That's a valid concern of mine. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anything that we can do to work around that as far as modifying the product. And I'm probably going to follow up with them as, on this as well and see what they have to say about that because in general, I like the product. It did well. Again, if you haven't yet, go ahead and watch Kelly's video as soon as you're done watching this one. I'll link to it in the description. But I have concerns about putting it on my drone for day-to-day -day use just due to the general wear and tear that could result in an accidental deployment. That said, if I can get a waiver with this and I am ever flying over a crowd, it's definitely going to be on my drone. But as for an everyday kind of thing that I would have on just in case, I'm really not feeling it. I think it would be great to have something like this on the drone that you can use every day, but... I don't know if I can work with that. All right, guys, that's it for now. There are three videos coming up very soon. One is the announcement of the winner from our last contest on the Amazon Palette video. The other is a follow-up to the Amazon Palette video. I think I'm almost to a point where I can talk about it. And then the third one will be the laws and regulations around this, as well as some of the reasons why you might want to have one. Um, that might not be specific just to Para Zero, but it's going to be talking about the subject matter that the Para Zero covers. And that's going to be safety as well as um, flying over people, cars, and stuff like that. So that's coming up soon. I might do an additional video at number four. Kelly kind of hinted at this. I think it'd be kind of fun to attach this to random objects and drop it from a shorter height. So that way we can see it tested at shorter heights without risking damage to a very expensive drone. So I might be doing that soon. Stay tuned. And then if this happens to survive that um, and I continue to use it long term, I might give you an update later on about the longevity as I continue to use it. Granted, again, I'm not gonna be using it every day just for the concern that the, the lid might pop off accidentally and deploy the parachute, but it will definitely be in my tool set as something that I can use. And you know what? We actually might do an initial video, for a fifth video that's in the in the queue. Um, I'm going to have to call DJI to, the, to repair the Phantom 4. Maybe we'll record that process so that you guys can see what it's like if you haven't experienced it already as well as just to document it um, if I have any troubles with it, just to add to the transparency of the kind of support that you'd get with DJI. All right, that's it. See you guys later. If you haven't already, do the needful, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified for all my future videos, and make sure you guys all stay awesome.